What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about something that a lot of us don't think about at all. At least we don't consciously think about it, but it's in the back of a lot of our minds. And that thought is, why am I not making the amount of money that I feel I deserve to be making? And I can guarantee you that 100% of people of humankind have thought this before, but then it kind of just becomes an afterthought and it's just like a, it is what it is type of situation. But it doesn't have to be like that. And I'm actually here to address that question because I myself have asked myself that several, several times. So we're gonna jump straight into it. If you're new to the channel, I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So a question I used to ask myself all the time, especially when I was 20, 21 years old, was why am I not further along? And as I peeled back that onion of harsh truths, harsh realities, hard to swallow pills, whatever you wanna call it, every single one of those applied to me. And the thing that I realized was most of it fell back on me as a person. So when it comes to asking yourself questions like why you aren't making the amount of money that you feel you deserve to be making, these things need to be taken into account. So I'm gonna give you a few things that I have for myself as far as feedback, as far as insight, as far as looking within, so to speak, as cliche as that sounds, I had a lot to improve on and I had even more to think about when it came to life and making more money. So we're about to break those down right now. So the first thing, the first reason I should say why you're not making the amount of money you feel you should be making is you're staying in your comfort zone for too long. We all heard this old tired saying that doing the same things over a prolonged amount of time expecting different results is the definition of insanity. I was 100% guilty of insanity just I'm, I'm doing everything like I'm supposed to be doing. I'm waking up at this time, I'm going to work at this time, I'm coming back home at this time. Why am I not getting results? Sometimes once you get a routine down, you get set in it, you get really comfortable, and that stops you from taking the risks that you need to take in order to move on to the next level, whether that's the promotion at work, whether that's figuring out ways to make more money. Like what I'm saying is we stay in our comfort zones. Everyone's comfort zones look different, but I can tell you a little bit about mine. Me, I've never been a huge fan of speaking in front of large audiences of people until I started doing it every single day. Then it's like, ah, oh, it's not even that bad. I actually kind of look forward to doing this now. But before you couldn't pay me, literally you couldn't pay me to talk in front of a group of people. I would have been like, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm gonna sit this one out. You, you got it though. You got this one champ, I'm, <laughs> I'm staying at home. But it's simple things like that. Things that seem to have no impact on your money have a great impact on your money because when you're in your comfort zone, you're comfortable just barely making it to work on time, just barely making it to an event on time. You're comfortable sticking to yourself, not really talking to anybody, not really building a network. And this is advice I was giving to myself. So I'm not talking to you. I don't know you personally, but this is straight up what I was telling myself as a go-getter who wanted more for himself. This is what I was telling myself. And as I started to give myself this feedback, cause no one was gonna just come up and tell me these things. So I just had to think of it myself. And I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. So it so happened that my full-time job at the time required me to speak in front of a large group of people all the time after my training was done. So sure enough, I had to get comfortable doing it. I had to start learning how to improve at doing it. And because I'm like, well, if I'm gonna be doing this every day, I might as well improve and become the best level I can possibly get to, be the best version of myself that I can possibly achieve while doing this, why not? And the better you become at that stuff, you're seen as a higher level professional who is more competent and more eloquent in how they speak. And that right there can take you a ton of places in the work world. And that's just one example. To be comfortable just going home after work and chilling, relaxing, watching TV, playing music, eating, whatever the case is, and going to bed. I had to make that uncomfortable for me because I was like, you know what? I need to make more money. I'm gonna get up and do something. I had to get up and grind. So I was like, you know what? I wanna start me a little business on the side, showing people how to play the drum. Because if y'all didn't know, when I was in college, I played on the drum line for three of the four years that I was there. And it was an incredible experience. So I knew that I had the skill set to teach anyone who was aspiring to do the same thing or similar things. Cause I was like, hey, I've got results. I've played at several college games. I've traveled, I played at an NFL game before at the Carolina Panthers game in front of 70,000 plus people. So I had to really 
think about these things and think about what's going to get me out of my comfort zone. It definitely wasn't comfortable introducing myself to people who had kids who were interested in playing in the drum line. It wasn't comfortable putting myself out there like that and saying, all right, you can come into my home and I'm going to show your kid how to play the drums and this is how much I'm charging every single hour we're going to do this. That stuff's not comfortable. I had to lay out lesson plans and I missed out on some sleep between work and between my side hustle at the time. But my money started going up. Not to mention the fact that I was kind of hating my job at the time and it felt very much like a dead end job. Like sure there were growth opportunities within, but there were people there who had 20 plus years of experience and I felt like I didn't really stand a chance against them at the job. And plus I was just not having a good time. I was working a ton of hours, 70 plus hours per week. I was sweating, working hard, working smart. I was doing everything. I was underappreciated, definitely underpaid. And that was a big portion of where that question came from. Why am I not further along? Why am I doing so much? I went to college and I'm still having to do all of this crap. What is really going on with this? And it didn't matter that I was in the mid 80s per year when it came to my yearly salary. What mattered was that I was exhausted. I had no free time and if you took all my salary for the year and you chunked it down between hours, I would be working for pennies on the dollar. That's not fair. That's not where I want to be. You could have paid me 75,000, 70 or even $65,000 a year at that time and given me literally half the hours I was working a week. And I would have been like, I would have felt more free and more rich just because I had the time and the money even if it was a little less, because then I know at least for the hours I'm working, I'm actually making what I'm worth. Does that make sense? So I had to really think about these things and make standards for myself. And despite how uncomfortable the job was, despite how much I hated it, literally hated it, I was comfortable living in the state I was living in. I'm born and raised in the state of North Carolina. That is what I'm used to. And I used to let my boss and even some of my peers and people who worked for me even at the time to say, well, you know, I mean, I know you don't like it that much here, but where else are you going to go? Come on, where are you going to go making this kind of money? You can't go nowhere else in this state and make this kind of money. And they really drilled that into my head because I was 21. And they're like, yeah, you, you young kid, you got a degree, but still, where are you going to go? You don't got that much experience. You can't really go that many places over here and get a good paying job. And that was instilled in my mind. And I almost believed it until I was like, you know what? Wait a minute. I don't got to listen to you. I don't have any kids, I don't have a wife, I don't have anybody holding me down in this area right now. I got family over here and I have friends over here and that's amazing, but I have to do what's best for me. So I made that leap, moved 36 hours away to Nevada and ever since my money has done nothing but go up. I'm talking double from the point of which that I was talking about when I was 21, starting my first job. So that's major. I had to get out of my comfort zone. I had to talk to people. I had to move across the state. I had to do a bunch of different things. I already had skills, but those skills mean nothing if you have no relationships with the people, if you have no network, if you have no tenacity or drive or intestinal fortitude to make certain leaps and jumps throughout life. And it really doubles in with personal growth. That's why I tell you every single video, this is about personal finance and personal growth simply because... If you're not growing yourself, your money is rarely, if ever, going to grow. But if you're always growing yourself every single day of the week, your money is going to grow along with it. And that's what led to me making more risks, putting myself on camera, talking in front of people. First, I started on Facebook, on Instagram, on Snapchat, and then I went ahead and moved over to YouTube, putting myself out there, making videos on advice. It wasn't just financial advice. It was other things too. It was, it was how to grow thick skin, how to become more confident how to stand up against adversity, things like that. Like I made a ton of videos over the years and even though it was nerve wracking, even though I was kind of like, well, what if somebody says this? I was like, screw it, I don't care what they think. I'm gonna put this out there anyway because I had to take risks and get out of my comfort zone. And now I feel very comfortable on camera. Those things led to not only salary increases multiple times over at the job, but it's also led to me in person talking to people being way smoother and people admire me for it and even ask me for advice and mentorship on the same things. It's also led to a promotion at work on top of salary increases on top of that promotion for performing highly at what I do. It's led to self-confidence. It's led to passive income streams. One from YouTube, two from a book. If you haven't read my book, check it out. Patreon, 
I could use some more followers on Patreon, but you know what I'm saying? It's still an income stream. But that's what I'm saying. I'm not anywhere near where I want to be yet, but I will be. And it's not going to take long because I don't stop for anything. But that comes from the tenacity, which is part of the foundation of everything that I just said when it comes to getting out of your comfort zone and taking risks. You have to have tenacity for that. You have to have intestinal fortitude for that. You have to have bravery for that. You have to work on yourself. You have to have confidence in believing in yourself. As crazy as it sounds, if you really believe in yourself, you can really go way further beyond your wildest imagination. And so another reason you may feel like you're not making what you deserve to be making is simply because your spending is too high. And I say this all the time, but I'm gonna really put it into perspective for you in this video. Check this out. Most people that tell me they don't make enough money are not people who like don't make any money, like it's people who were making anywhere between, we'll say 50 to 120 or 140 per year. All of them are in completely different situations as far as like how much they make. But then if you look at how much they spend, all of them have one thing in common, or I would say majority of them have one thing in common. They spend a lot and don't prioritize saving or investing. It's easy to make 80 grand a year and be like, oh, I'm making all this money. I'm gonna I'm get me a real nice place, a real nice car. I know where I'm living at right now is fine, but I'm gonna upgrade, because why not? Oh, it's Christmas, I'm about to, Merry Christmas, by the way. It's Christmas, let me, let me go ahead and uh, splurge on the family. Vacations are more expensive, food is more expensive, life is more expensive. But really, it just goes back to the first point. Because I'm making all this money, now life's about to be way more comfortable. Sitting on the couch is about to be extended now. I worked hard for this. We about to watch all kinds of TV. Now, we ain't going out today. We getting some Uber Eats. There's nothing wrong with these things fundamentally when it comes to moderation. But as we know, we don't do anything moderately nowadays. We do everything excessively nowadays. And that's exactly how we get into these issues. And I've never put myself in a position where I was like really overspending like crazy. But... One thing I did look at with myself was, you know, I would be further along if I started investing earlier. In order to invest, you need to master saving, right? So you need to not just master how to save your money, but you also need to understand how to invest, how the stock market works, what you want to invest in, what different commodities there are, and really understand what you're putting your money into. So that's like a whole nother conversation. But my point is, Instead of overspending on things that I didn't need, like, sure, I had money to do it, right? But that money didn't pay me back. I could go buy a $600 pair of sneakers, right? But that's not going to give me a return on my investment. But if I would have went and bought $600 worth of Nike stock back in 2017, which I could have done every single month without fail and without hurting my pockets, I would have seen a much bigger return, right? But that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm grateful that I wasn't an overspender and I wasn't a type of person that splurged. Sometimes I would get myself something nice, right? But I'm glad I didn't put myself in a perpetual state of catching up. You know what I mean? I didn't put myself in a position of, oh, well, that's $2,000 a month, but I only make $60,000 a year. Like, I didn't put myself in that type of situation. And then on top of that, I didn't put myself in a situation where I'm driving a super nice car that I'm paying $700, $800 a month for just to make everybody think that I got money. Because in that case, I don't have money. I'm at zero every single month because I just to maintain all these nice things. So you have to think about it. Is the problem that you don't make enough money or is the problem that you overspend so much that it feels like you don't have enough money left over to sustain, I don't know, sanity, a peace of mind or buy other things that you don't need? I don't know. But you want to have something that at least feel comfortable because I know what it's like to feel like you don't have a cushion. You don't have anything backing you up. It's a scary feeling and it can keep you up at night. So make decisions that cause you to spend less and really budget out everything and plan everything out. And I have videos for that. Check them out up here. And check this out. Here's another reason why you may feel like you're not making enough money. It's because you secretly feel like you don't deserve it. And I know that sounds like an oxymoron because the whole purpose of this video is why you aren't making the amount of money you feel you deserve. But think about it. If everything I just said is true at some capacity for you, subconsciously you start to think, I don't even deserve this. H have you ever heard of a goal, like let's say you're making, I don't know, anything less than $80,000 a year. Six figures can seem so far-fetched. And then 
make a mistake and start telling people you want to make six figures by, I don't know, 2023, they might start laughing at you and making it seem like it's hard. Like, you, what makes you special enough to make six figures? Because people have put in their head that making a certain amount of money per year, like six figures, for example, is just like, we're not even talking 900,000. We're talking 100,000 and above, right? And people misconstrue and start to contort what that number actually means and don't even think about how much that actually equates to every month. They don't even think that it's $8,333.33 per month. They just think of it in terms of, oh, well, that's just the big number and I can't achieve that. So, so then you get into a state of thinking like, well, what would it even take for me to get that? I'd have to get promoted and, and that's probably not gonna happen. That's not likely because I don't have, and then you start telling yourself why you're not worthy of what you want. But then you keep that goal forward though. You're still like, well, I would really like, but when you tell yourself you'd really like things, but you don't put forward the action to get there, that's just a wish. And no one's gonna just throw $100,000 a year in your lap just because I like it, just because you're a good guy, just because you're a good girl. Like, nah, that ain't how life works. Had to learn that one the hard way myself. And then chances are you really do work hard for real, like at your job. And so you get home, you probably are really tired. And so then you might feel lazy and you might go a whole weekend without doing anything productive that could push you forward. Anything that's going to teach you something, anything that's going to help put money into your pocket. I've dedicated so many weekends of my life to doing that, that it is my habit now. And if I don't do it, I feel bad. But you might be like, well, nah, I'm going to take this one. Ah, I couldn't do that. I don't know how you do it, I couldn't do that. Then you keep telling yourself and reinforcing that thought, then you really don't do it for real, and then that just becomes a part of who you are. And so then you tell yourself, well dang, I'm really not, I'm messing up, I'm really not putting forth the effort or the time or the sweat to actually accomplish the things I said I want. I don't deserve this. So you subconsciously know why, but let me tell you this, let me tell you this, because this is how I used to be, so I used to chew myself out all the time. The same stuff I'm t saying in this video, that's what I was telling myself. And what that did was it built tough skin, but it also built accountability for myself. And the one thing I'm gonna leave you with is this question. New Year's coming up, so you have time to think about this. How different would you be? How different would your life be if everything that you know you needed to do, you did it the moment you realized you needed to do it? I don't care how long it takes. I don't care if it's a couple hours. I don't care if you you know, have to spend some time after work. If you, you know what I'm saying? Spend time after studying, whatever it is that you're doing right now, how different would your life be if you took action immediately on what you knew needed to get done without thinking, oh, well, this isn't gonna work because of this. Like, how are we so sure that something isn't gonna work and we ain't even tried it yet? Lack of experience, right? I am the guiltiest person in the world of doing that, so I know. But I'm here to tell you, your life will be abundantly different in a good way if you just did everything you knew you needed to do when you realized you needed to do it. I promise you. So that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.